Hello everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to your Legion. Today's a great day, I'll tell you why. Finally, finally, I'm over a lot of trials and tribulations that I've had in the last year. Three deaths in the family, shoulder surgery, two broken ankles, it's been, it's been horrendous. But, I do want to say that I am quite enthused to be here with you today because I've got a new product to show you and this new product has made me re-enthused about the industry. And I'll tell you why. We've had a lot of, I guess you could say, launches come up in the last year, year and a half, but they weren't, they didn't meet the hype that I really thought that they should meet. I was actually quite, in a way, eh, a little bit, eh, I don't know what to say. I was a little bit upset that we didn't get the jump in the technology that I was really looking for. Now, NVIDIA has just launched a new product, and it's the 1080. It is, of course, the enthusiast level graphics card. Now, let's go ahead and call this 1080 Brand X. And the reason why I want you to call it Brand X is because I want you to have an open mind. There's no AMD, there's no NVIDIA, there's no Intel, there's no nothing else. We're going to call it Brand X. I want you to look at this product based on how it performs, what the price point is, and what you're going to get out of it not because you prefer NVIDIA over AMD or Intel or et cetera, because this is something that you're gonna to wanna to put in your computer, you're gonna to wanna to use, and you're gonna get the best value for your dollar out of. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the GeForce GTX 1080. Okay, guys and girls, well, here it is, the GeForce GTX 1080. As you can see, they've changed the actual shroud a little bit from the 980 and the 980 Ti and, of course, the uh, Titan, which was black. But they actually kind of put a little bit of bevel on it and did a few different nice things to it. It looks actually a little bit better in my eyes. On the back, we do have a back plate again, and you could actually take this piece off if you want to. I know NVIDIA said that they weren't going to put back plates on it because when you're running SLI, it gets too close and there's too much heat generated. Well, what they did was they decided to go ahead and put it back because there is not much heat generated by this, uh, by this GPU. And you could also take this back piece off here. You could also take that off via the screws. As you can see, it's got the magnesium embedded fan and it does blow out through the back. One thing about this card is that it has an 8-pin power connector. That's all you're going to need to power this card is an 8-pin power connector. GeForce GTX is an LED. It lights up. If you have uh, your control panel and you go ahead into GeForce Experience, you can go ahead and set this to blink, phase on and off, do whatever you want to. Of course, it is SLI, and they have a new SLI bridge coming out. It's SLI HB, which actually boosts up the frequency from 400 to 650. So you're actually getting a better, uh, better performance out of your PCI bridge. Of course, NVIDIA will be se selling that and also the AIBs or AICs, uh, your add-in add -in partners. So it's going to be a, 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 a flat bridge. Please go to my uh, website and look at it. You can actually see a picture of it. Maybe I'll show you a picture in a few minutes. What, what the hell? All right. In any case, let's go ahead and talk about it a little bit. It's the new Pascal processor. All right. It's the most efficient, most powerful, powerful processor NVIDIA has ever built. What does it do? Well, it produces graphics. It's going to help you game better. It's going to give you better quality game. All right. 2,560 CUDA cores. It's got a base clock of 1607, a boost clock of 1733. Of course, we got GPU Boost 3.0 now. GPU Boost 3.0 is actually different than 2.0. Before, everything on the GPU Boost used to be on a linear phase, which is basically a straight line going up like this. With the new GPU Boost 3.0, if you set it to manual, you could actually set your voltages up so you could actually get a curve. So when you're overclocking it and you're actually using the card, 
that curve is going to bring you closer to your high point of where the card is actually going to perform on its tip top level instead of having a blank space that's going to be basically in between from when you actually start and ramp up. So instead of going like this, you're actually going on a curve and you're actually meeting that top line more than you would if you were going on a linear line. It's got some new memory in it. It's GDDR5X. It's got eight gigs in there. And the GDDR5X is a lot quicker. We could actually get 10 gigabytes per second out of this. And the reason why is because a couple different things. First, they, reinvent, they redid the I.O. It's a lot better. Also, the circuitry in it between the memory controller and the memory is a lot better. So by them doing that and putting more technology into, into the memory and the memory interface, we're getting better throughput. So you're going to have a lot of bandwidth coming out of this card. Now, what I could say is this is the single most powerful video card I have ever tested. And I'm being serious. I mean, I've tested stuff and said this before, but let's look at it this way. This performs better than the Titan X, which is the king of single GPU graphics cards. Now, we're not talking about dual graphics. We're talking about one single chip on here. The Titan, up till now, was the king in performance. This actually beats the Titan overall in the 13 benchmarks that I ran by 30%. And guess what? It has 180 watts. That's all it requires to power it. It's a 180 watt video card. Not 250, not 270, not 312, 180 watts. And that's all you need to get the performance where it is. Of course, it's the Pascal chip too that's giving you the performance in the way that it's made with 7.2 billion capacitors if you want to know that. But other than that, this is the single most powerful GPU I have ever tested. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the benchmarks. I'll come back. Maybe I'll play a little bit of Doom in this game, in this video. Game, okay. Uh, maybe I'll play the game Doom in this video for you guys, just for maybe a minute or so, so you can take a look at it. I play at 4K, and you're getting over 60 frames a second, and I got it on high settings.
Well, I don't know if you can see the uh, upper corner, but uh, we're getting anywhere from 60 to 79 frames a second. It's been a long time since I've been able to say this, but normally we're talking about a 30% increase in video cards, you know, in performance when we go down a couple generations. This is the first time, and geez, I, I don't know how long it's been that I've actually seen a video card give me that much performance in one generation, and especially over a flagship product that costs about three to four hundred dollars more. What I want to do is talk a little bit about this Founders Edition that you might have been hearing about. The NVIDIA Founders Edition is basically what we used to call the reference board. NVIDIA used to make a few of them. They would hand them out to their partners, they would hand them out to the reviewers, and then basically the product line would stop. Well, now what NVIDIA has, has done is, they're actually going to be selling the Founders Edition, which is $699. It's got a MSRP of $699. And of course, the starting MSRP for the card is going to be $599, which is kind of weird, but we'll get through that in a second. They're going to be selling it. You're going to see it exactly the way that I showed you. It's going to have everything that you saw on it. It's not going to be a piece of plastic or anything like that. So you're going to get some nice quality out of it. You're going to get the, the vapor chamber cooler. You're going to get the rear blower. You're going to get the magnesium embedded fan, the metal shroud, the LED, etc. So you'll be able to purchase this car on the market as a founder's edition. Now, the adding partners, the partners, what are they going to do? Well, they have a starting point of $599 with the car. It's going to be, it's going to be fun to see what they could do if they start at a starting point of $599. Now let's get back to performance with this. Again, like I was saying, we got 30% increase across the board with performance over the Titan X. I have yet, in as long as I can remember, see one generation jump that much and actually eclipse a flagship. I could see two generations doing that, but not one. So why not look at it this way? Don't think about what your favorite is. Think about what type of money you're going to spend. Your hard-earned money, okay? You're going to spend your hard-earned money on a video card that you're going to use to game. You're not going to buy it to to play chuzzle or something like that, you're gonna game with, right? So think about this. Me as a consumer, and I, I have both AMD and Nvidia cards, but me as a consumer, what I always did was I bought the best that my money could buy. It had nothing to do with branding. What you wanna do is you wanna look at the price, 599 to 699, we don't know what's gonna go on with that. The performance. Okay, it performs better than a thousand dollar card. So that's a no brainer right there if you're in the market for this enthusiast level video card. You're getting 180 watts, so you're not going to, you know, spend a lot of electricity. You're not having a 300 watt card to get this type of performance. And you can game in 4K. Now, VR is going to be a different story. You know, VR requires a little bit more stuff. You might need it to have them in SLI. I would suggest using it in an SLI, and of course, if you read my review, you noticed that I talked about VR works. NVIDIA put a lot of R&D into this VR works. Uh, they're creating a whole ecosystem, a nice environment uh, with VR works. They got a really cool game called VR Funhouse that you guys could download and play if you have an Oculus Rift or you have an HTC Vive. And it's really fun. You're in a fun house. You're doing things that you would do, you know, like throwing balls at stuff, shooting flaming arrows, and doing all this. Really great. It was fun. It's something that if you're fortunate enough, unlike me, to have, uh, to have an Oculus Rift or a, or a HTC Vive that you might want to go ahead and do and try to play because it's really good. Now, VR audio is in its infancy, and that's basically where they take the sound and they bounce it off of things so it actually sounds more realistic. Now you're going to need three cards in order to do that because you're going to have to dedicate one card just for sound because it's going to do ray tracing and that's how it bounces the stuff off so it actually sounds like it's coming, you know, it's being, sounds being absorbed from this area or that area. So NVIDIA has put a lot of new technologies. Also they have SMP, simultaneous uh, multi-frame display or multi oh, SMP, let's just call it that. 
Basically what it does is it simultaneously projects an image. So when you're in a surround environment or a 3D environment, say with a Rift on or, or a Vive, what it's going to do is if you, if you remember in the old days, if you had a surround system, it always seemed like things didn't match up as you went around the image because it projected the image a lot wider. So things got distorted. This is going to get, this gets rid of the distortion. And what it does is it puts a smooth, plain image around so you get a better surround environment. I can't show it to you because it's just a little bit hard to do right now. I mean, uh, sure, if I could set it up and, and do a little demo, I will in the future. But in any case, what we're looking at is the single most powerful card that was, has ever been built. The Founders Edition has a price of $699. It starts at a manufacturer's retail price of $599. We do have the 1070 coming out. I am very curious to see how that one's gonna do, because if this one beats the Titan, I'm wondering if that one will beat the 980 Ti or even match the Titan in performance. So, and that's gonna be about a $399 card. So mm, that might be the sweet spot right there. But in any case, all I wanna say is it's your hard earned money. It's for you to make a choice. Based on my testing, based on my overall user experience, I had a great user experience. Doom came out the other day. There were drivers for it immediately. Unfortunately, with AMD, it took them up until Monday to get drivers out for Doom. So that's another thing that you do wanna look at. How quickly are these manufacturers producing drivers that are co gonna cover these new games that we have coming out? Because I usually get them on the day that they're launched, and I want it, I want a game ready card. We're gonna go ahead and give this as an editor's choice award. And I wanna say thank you everyone for watching. You have a great day. I know I sound a little sick, sorry about that. I'll see you the next time. Make sure you subscribe. Bye bye.